I'll echo Jose and that it's really fantastic to be here. Joyce, this is just, it's an honor to be around such a really fantastic group of providers, patients, makers, um, and having these conversations. And I have to tell you that I, um, I wore my maize and blue today in hopes that I would <laughs> blend in and you guys wouldn't realize that I'm actually from Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> so hopefully you'll still now listen to what I say. As you heard, we spend quite a bit of time thinking about how making is changing and can change healthcare, and what are the opportunities for bringing the parts of the maker movement that we enjoy and love and just have so much fun doing into the part of us that is just really fundamentally what keeps us thriving as, as human beings, our, our health. Um, we work specifically with a group, um, a really great group within our healthcare system, which is the maker, our nurses. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the stealth ingenuity of maker nurses and how this group is quietly and incrementally changing healthcare through making. So this is like preaching to the choir, but um, but really, you know, finding how what are the ways that this movement that is full of robots and fire and drones um, and creativity can be brought into health. And there's three just quick points that, that we usually start with to kind of bring everybody to the same page. And knowing that, again, to be not to be repetitive, but it's not just about the technology. This is really about a mindset. And this is about thinking and understanding that you know, the tools are available and that you don't necessarily need to be an expert or a trained engineer to do this. And that there is a community that by sharing your ideas with, you can really accelerate your ability to make change. And then, but it is also, again, so you can see at the bottom, and we know, you know, right over here, there's a number of these tools available that, that you can explore as well. So the first time that we experienced the maker movement in healthcare, it was actually um, a little bit south in Nicaragua. And we were bringing students through the hospital, um, touring to understand what were the clinical challenges at hand, and what were the, what were the opportunities to work within medical devices. And as the director of this hospital in Esteli, Nicaragua, was showing us the brand new um, ventilators within the NICU. My colleagues and I couldn't help but notice the nurses within the background, who were doing, had nothing to do with the fancy equipment that was humming along on its own, but what the nurses were so quietly and intentionally doing, they had their own little supply chain, and they had the cloth and the tape, and they were hand cutting and assembling these protective glasses for the neonatal patients who are undergoing phototherapy treatment. And it took us almost 30 minutes to convince them to take a picture of this. Because to them, this was just what they were doing to solve the problem. It was, why was this any different than, you know, measuring vital signs or, or things that you just do in the hospital without even thinking. But if they would have been in Cambridge and Boston, we would have brought them into our class to give a lecture. We did have them give an impromptu lecture in the hospital. So these are the maker nurses. These are the group of individuals who inspire the work that we do and who help us to think through what are the tools and materials and ways that we can share this creativity throughout the healthcare system. So in 2013, we step back and with the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, ask the question, if this is happening all throughout Central America, what does this look like in the US? Is making something that is just restricted to resource poor settings, or is this also something that is pervasive in, in other ways throughout the healthcare? And to start that, instead of going straight into the hospitals, we did a literature review. And these are some of the examples that we found when you look at what improvising and creativity in nursing. And as you can tell from the images, these weren't things that we were seeing coming from recent PubMed published <laughs> articles. 
This is part of a thriving community of maker nurses from the beginning of the 1900s who were publishing and sharing examples of ways that they're making across the hospital. So it was everything from color-coded IVs to aprons to evacuate patients from the NICU in case of an emergency to um, syringe parts, ways to encapsulate syringe parts when they went through the autoclave. So we spent the first part of the study looking at what ma mapping, what this looked like over time. So from 1900 to 19, um, really the 1980s, we did an inventory of where, what these examples were and what was their frequency. And you can see the first part, so the 1900 to 1930, this was, they were titled improvising. This is what nurses considered their work, their craft, was they were improvising to solve problems. And you had some, some very evident spikes as, as they were going throughout that part of time. A shift to practical suggestions. Still in the same mentality of we are solving problems and we are going to share this so that others can solve the same problems that they encounter with these tools and materials. The best, the best era was right after the war in the, in the late 40s and 50s, the trading post. So there was this camaraderie among the nursing community in a very practical way that was so exciting and inspiring to see. And unfortunately, right after that, we saw this huge dip. And part of that, we look, well, we're still digging through what that, what that actually means and would be excited to have conversations with you all if you have ideas about what, where that might have come from. But part of it, you know, you can't help but think, when you go from a trading post, which is really this like sharing of information to ideas that work, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't share my idea unless it works. In the 80s, 70s and 80s, we saw this come back. We saw a little spike again, the creative care unit. But we were no longer, this was no longer the era of the baby aprons. This was binders and bulletin boards. And really that, you know, it's still these tangible devices and they're still impacting care, but in a very different way with, I would say, a very different like, risk profile in that regard. And then after that, it was gone. And it was replaced with um, a section called equipment. So nurses were no longer sharing what they were making. They were reviewing equipment provided to them by <coughs> medical device manufacturers. So with that under our belt, we started and launched Maker Nurse. And this... There were four questions that we were asking. Um, are nurses, you know, is this something, did nurses really stop doing this? Did they really just then rely on, on you know, what we saw, this equipment review and, and feedback loop? Or did they just stop telling people about it? Um, so we dove into these four categories of what material they might be using, um, how their ideas if, you know, would flow among, among their peers and colleagues, what recognition were they getting, if any, and where were they? So a nationwide survey, um, you can see, you know, we thought we might get these real, like, hubs in rural parts of the country, but if you control for population, this looks similar to most maps you would see. We did a deep dive into five hospitals, which are right up here, and these hospitals were driven by the data that we got from the study. So it wasn't necessarily the largest names that you hear of in healthcare, but this is really where nursing leadership was excited to jump on board and their frontline staff was ready to kind of hit the ground running, if you will, and be our eyes on the ground to, to collect this data. So three, I would say, key really characteristics then of those sites were that they had, you know, this was an institutional priority. Innovation, they, didn't may, may, they may have known how to define it, but they may not, but they were, I mean, meant that they were willing to try. And that when they saw Maker Nurse as an experiment, and they were willing to join as a partner in, in exploring that built research teams at each of these hospitals with nurses and different units um, in each hospital was slightly different. We walked them through how to spot those examples of making like we saw in Nicaragua and how to interview nurses and how even if there was no tangible example, how to coach the staff at the front lines through articulating the ideas that they had. Oh, one minute. All right. Um, so here's a quick, in, our, in the six minutes of, or sorry, six months of the study, this was a lot of what we were doing, um, going through supply closets, rounding on units. Um, this, if, if, can anybody, you know, this is one of the examples that we saw. When you guys see this, can anybody spot where the example of making is? And feel free to, to shout it out if you do. It's kind of dark, so it's sort of tricky. Okay, so you've got... 
a towel at the bottom and that syringe sticking up at the top. And the syringe is taped in place, um, the tubing is taped in place so that the syringe will stay vertical. Again, so here's a, you know, another example where there's a commercially available product hold trachea is in place, um, but then there's also the nurses really prefer to use the, the cloth tape with the foam because it's easier and quicker and more lightweight for, for the patients. Um, so another quick example, um, this right here, so this is a ventilator, and this is a string that's holding the ventilator, tu ventilator tubing in place so it doesn't tug on the patient's skin. Victor Tai, a nurse from Mamonides, he started at Mamonides Medical Center um, when we met him, and he has since moved to Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York. Victor designed this Lego system in order to translate um, cancer therapy to autistic and nonverbal patients who are coming through his unit. And he actually brought this. When he was interviewing for his new job at Memorial Sloan Kettering, they asked him, can you bring your Lego model? We've heard about your Lego model. Can you bring that to show? And he did. Um, Nicole Wooden from UTMB in Galveston, Texas. Nicole transformed what was normally a stack of 12 towels used under, to stabilize a patient's arm in a catheter treatment. Um, just something that like a medical device that used a paper tray, a computer stand, and three pieces of, of acrylic from Home Depot. Um, and this is something that's used inside of the cath lab at UTMB to stabilize patients' arms when they're undergoing um, catheter insertion. Cleo Glover, also from UTMB in Galveston, Texas. Cleo works in the correctional facility and has to carry around um, way too many medicines at, at any one given time. And so in order to have her hands free when she's walking through the different layers of, of doors, she actually had bought different belts from Home Depot and Velcro and, and combined these to make something that, that fit her need and solve, solve a problem for her. And Roxana Reyna from Driscoll Children's Hospital in Corpus Christi, Texas. Roxana works as a wound care specialist in the NICU, and for patients who have omphaloceles, which is an abdominal wall defect, their intestines are born outside of their, of their body, she looked at that and thought, why don't we treat that as a wound? Well, there's no bandages for something this size. But the bandages that were meant to treat pressure sores on adults at the sacrum were exactly the size she needed. So she worked with her surgical team at the hospital, and they created a hardware protocol around how to use these different bandages to treat these very delicate patients, reduced their treatment time from four months to two months, and greatly reduced the, the, the risk and, and the, the potential for infections. Um, as Susanna mentioned, the White House has been sponsoring maker fairs for the past two years. And in 2014, Roxana was able to attend based off of her work in, her, in, in wound care as an honored maker. I think I might be out of time, true, or a few more minutes, okay. Um, really quickly then, these are, so at a high level, um, the drivers that really influenced how, what supports making inside of hospitals. Some of them were things that we expected and some of them really took us by surprise. You know, we were at, we thought we were going to be right across the river at some of the best, you know, prestigious hospitals around the country, but it actually turned out that the small and lean care settings were much more receptive to this level of innovation. Hospitals that experienced a shock to the system, whether it was man-made or financial or natural disaster, this really created an environment for innovation, um, you know, like we hadn't seen before. The materials, these, when we did an inventory of the materials, here's a quick glimpse into what we found nurses were using. And the size of the material here indicates the frequency that we saw this. And so what our team is doing now, as part of the next steps, is we're overlaying this to, well, what would we have used? If we were solving some of these same problems, how would we solve them in the lab? And so we have a number of different pilot projects that we're now working on with these expedition sites, introducing to complement, not replace, but to really complement what is already happening on the front line in a number of different ways. So kits, spaces, these are a, a few quick pictures of the maker health spaces that we are setting up um, in both academic institutions and hospitals across the country. Um, UTMB in Galveston, Texas is one of the flagship sites 
Um, we have, you know, it's not just about installing and setting up the 3D printers and then watching, you know, waiting for the magic to happen. Um, this is, you know, the picture on the left is inside of the burn unit, measuring the bed and getting the right dimensions in order to then go back and to design the system. And part of that system includes 3D printed parts, but the other part is materials from Home Depot. So it's really about, you know, what is going to solve the problem. And so again, workshops, carts, toolkits, and spaces. There's not, it's not a one size fits all, but it's about what is the best prototyping environment within the institution, whether that is a hospital, whether that is the YMCA community center, or whether that is you know, nursing home or school. There are, you know, there, making can happen anywhere. And this is really, you know, a great group to have together because this is not just about the technical challenges. This is about how do we solve this from a holistic perspective.